<laughs> uh, were you ever uh, thrown out of the school choir, told not to sing by your family or encouraged to mime in school assembly? Well, don't despair if you were, because you could still find your voice in rock choir. More on this in a moment. First, David Silito went to see the rehearsals. We're in Guildford with Joe, Mary, Harry and more than 350 other members of rock choir. Well, sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. It's exciting and it's scary. Here it's all about energy and passion and really wanting to do it as a group. Well, I've always had doubts about whether I could sing or not, because um, you know lots of people say you're either natural or you're not. But I suddenly thought, actually, I can do this a bit. It was started four years ago by Carolyn Lusher and has rather taken off. And if you think this is a pretty impressive sound, well, this is less than half of the 12 rock choirs. And there are plans for another 48 of them. Perhaps it's the mix of songs or Caroline's easy-to-follow teaching methods, but there's also another attraction. No auditions. This is a room filled with people who never thought they'd end up singing in public. That's, uh, that's half, the, half the joy of it, I think, is that no one's auditioning you and um, just come along and sing. I didn't think I could sing, really, till I came here. And I'm not sure I still can, but it's still quite good fun. I love singing, but when I was at school, I was kicked out of the choir, so I couldn't sing the... You don't need to be able to read music, you just obey Caroline, but it seems to work. All of these guys getting up on stage and letting me lead them it is, is an emotional thing, so I do appreciate it. I don't tell you I don't think, but I do. <laughs> So, from a lunchtime enthusiasm to soon 60 rock choirs. And their next ambition? Well, they want to appear at Glastonbury. David Salotto, BBC News, Guildford. And you saw her there, the founder and driving force of rock choir, Caroline Redmond Lush, and she's with us now. Morning. Morning. Just one, up to about 400 people turned up for that. Yeah, yeah. Were there any men in there at all? About 10. Intimidate. We need men. Number 35 to 1. Yeah. The ladies have a great time, but the guys, they have to be particularly confident to come in. Um, but we're gradually getting a few more. So, uh, so how did this all begin? I used to be a singer up in London, playing the piano, uh, singing in the Dorchester and places like that. And, and after four years of, of late nights and partying, decided to retreat to the country, as, as we musicians sometimes do, and ended up teaching A-level performing arts discovered that a lot of the students, most of the students who studied performing arts couldn't read music. And we ended up at lunch times with them round the piano, round the, the baby grand at the, the college, going through kind of my career, my, my kind of past 10 years actually, because I started at 15, all the kind of Motown songs, pop, uh, rock songs, singing with me at the piano. And I said to them, well, let, let's, let's get some harmonies going. Let, let me introduce something to you as an enrichment activity. So five years later, there were 170 students gathered around the piano every Wednesday lunchtime. And I thought, well, this, this, this could work mm. as a business. This, this might work. So I quit my job. I needed 120 members to keep my house. So everything was, was kind of, you know, scary. So how did it work as a business then? <clears throat> well, as a business, we, we advertised, um, they pay for their tuition. Uh, they pay termly. Uh, it's not very expensive. And they turn up for 10 weeks, an hour and a half each week uh, in various locations. And I teach them, and I write all the harmonies for the songs. I choose the good. But do you have to know music to, to take part? I mean, a lot of people put up by sheet no, music. No, they, they don't have to read music, and there's no audition at all. 
so they can step in. They they try us out really. We say yeah. come and see if you and like us. And they'd be us. familiar with the songs, a lot of the songs anyway, because yeah, pop songs. yeah. But I tell them not to go away and listen to them, particularly before I taught the harmonies, because I changed the songs slightly mm. to suit. Rock so mine. how many times has someone turned up and they've, they've just shuffled into their place very excitedly and then boomed out and been so off key, and you just think, hell's bells, what am I going to do with this person? How many times has that actually not, happened? It's not happened at all. I think really? by the time they pick up the phone or email us at Rock Choir. Um, they've already got the confidence to know that actually deep down they know they can sing. I've only met two people who are actually tone deaf in my entire career and they walked into the room and said, I'm tone deaf and I said rubbish. And they sang and I thought, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what gonna You're right. Then what do you do? Yeah. Then what do you do? Well, perhaps this <clears throat> course isn't for you, which will be sad. I mean, but sure actually that, those two weren't trying to join Rock Choir. They, they came for private tuition to try and do X Factor, actually. Right. And I just thought, oh, you don't really want to do it. So you sent them along and said, you'll make good television. <laughs> yes, poor, poor but thing. But if somebody did, I mean, would you, would you ever turn anybody away? No. 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 Because that's the whole point of it, really. Yeah, it? the whole point is, is um, everyone can join. So we have six to ten year olds, Rock Choir juniors, ten to twenty one. And then the adults, um, all around Surrey, Berkshire, Hampshire, Hertfordshire, mm. uh, 60 rock choirs. But you're aiming for world September. domination in the well, end. Well, it was a joke at college. I used to say to the students, oh, you, you give me some time. And, so you want yeah. to go to Glastonbury? Take the choir to Glastonbury? I'd be in contact with them, but it, it's getting past the first hurdle, getting, getting noticed by them enough that I can take them on stage. And we, we've done Guildfest quite a few times, which is the, the smaller equivalent in Guildford. We've had 300 on stage each time. But of course, the spectacle that we create, I, we, we do choreograph movements as well, as you could see in, in, in the film. Yeah. So they're learning their harmonies, they're learning coordination at the same time. And, and the overall view of 300 right. on stage is amazing. Mm. Let's just have a quick listen to your marvellous work. It does, it does look like a whole lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. It's, it's to have everyone in there. They have an hour and a half. The, the singing releases endorphins anyway, so we're a head start already, aren't we, with that? Um, and they, they trust me, and, then I, and I, I teach them. It makes them, you smile sure. just watching. Yeah. And you had the opportunity to appear on Last Choir Standing, but you had other prior engagements. Yeah, the, the dates they offered, they suggested that, that if we got through, because of course we, we didn't know if we were going to get through, um, hit our, my wedding day. Uh, two weeks of a honeymoon. We talked about cancelling honeymoon. What do we do? The BBC talked about um, do we come down and film the wedding? Because of course, 300 of the choir was singing at the wedding. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, you know, the only problem is that the, the bride will always win if it's a competition. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and, and I need to relax and concentrate on getting married. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but on the day, it, it was a beautiful day, and, and the only tear I, I shed actually was about the choir. And you had 300, 300 people singing. <laughs> 300. We were going to have a small private family because of course in the area we know so many yeah. people and we see them everywhere we go uh, and you're, it was you're planning to expand it, I mean it's a sort of franchise sort of thing you're, you're trying to do or what is it well we look we, we, pro we will franchise I think in the future but I, I'm a control freak and I need to know that the, the standard of teaching because the reputation we've got is such a high standard of mm. teaching that the, the guys that I get on board are going to be the best so at the moment I've taken on eight um, new music graduates who I'm training. They, they go through six months of solid training and in September they'll be out there. They're fab fabulous, my new team around yeah. me. What would be your ultimate ambition then? Um, I think I'd like to take the Rock Choir into perform for the Royal Family. Olympics? These kind of things that you say, well, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. You know, yes. why, why not? You know, why, we should have had you there as a big we? welcoming committee for, for the president. president. Yeah, we could have done that. You yeah. just have to ring me. Well, if you're talking about the Olympics, it is world domination. It is, it, it is, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, we should have 4,000 members in the Rock Choir by then, so that would be a good gig, wouldn't it, really? Well, it's, it's really interesting. Brilliant. Idea. Yeah, Thanks very really much. good to see you. Thank you very much.